So we've talked a lot about how important mindfulness is in the practice of Hakomi. Originally, uh, in body-centered psychotherapy, Ron talked about five principles that Hakomi is based on, and mindfulness is one of them. The others are unity, the unity principle, that everything is part of a greater whole. Organicity, which is this trust in the unfolding of things as the conditions are perfect for what wants to happen. Mindfulness, of course, which is this uh, simple attention to present moment experience just as it is. Um, the mind-body holism is part of the unity principle, but it really points at the importance of recognizing that the body is an expression of the mind. So body-centered psychotherapy understands that it's impossible to work psychologically with anybody without paying attention to their embodied experience. And nonviolence is one of the original principles identified of Hakomi. And of course, nonviolence can be very confusing. It's a, it's a principle that you would imagine that any kind of therapy would be based on, do no harm. But it's much more subtle and important in Hakomi, and we'll talk more about that later. Sometimes this principle of nonviolence is confusing to people who are helpers and therapists. Obviously, we want to do no harm. In fact, in Hakomi, we want even more to sit in the practice of loving presence and appreciate the person for the awesome person that they are. Nonviolence doesn't necessarily mean that we don't interrupt the client. We can sit in loving presence, receiving them, appreciating them, but we're tracking states of mind and we know that because this whole method is about assisted self-discovery and assisting someone in mindfulness to notice how they're organizing experience in habitual ways so that they have more options, some alternatives, some choice, then it requires sometimes interrupting a state of mind that's not useful to the process. And how do we do that in a way that isn't violent? How can we actually support somebody to change something that's not useful to them and may even be causing unnecessary suffering, but not have that be forceful or um, non-respectful? and nonviolent, And this requires some of the skills that we teach in Hakomi, besides this skill of, of managing our own state of mind. It's a skill of being able to find the right moment to shift the client's attention in a way that's useful to them and captures their attention and their curiosity so that they can begin this whole practice of self-study. For me, part of what allows the principle of nonviolence to be an integral part of the way I work is this other principle that is called organicity, is a trust that the conditions present in any moment are actually perfect for what wants to happen, that the unfolding and the healing unfolding is part of something organic and natural. And I like to use the phrase remembering wholeness for healing. Healing is a verb. The noun of healing is wholeness. And I don't think healing is about a return to wholeness. I think healing is the verb of wholeness. Healing is wholeness happening. And that trust, that way of viewing wholeness, unity, the unity principle, the uh, appreciation of the natural and spontaneous way everything unfolds, that's what I think of as organicity. And that trust allows me to participate in a way that's not only nonviolent, but loving and useful at the same time that helps a client 
or the students in a training to have the experience that, that they need in that moment. This is the principle of organicity. It's based on an appreciation of wholeness, which is unity. It uses mindfulness, this way of paying attention to things just as they are without needing to manipulate. And it's nonviolent. And all of that is grounded in this understanding of the mind-body um, integration. And, and I, as the therapist, sitting in a place of loving presence appreciating, fascinated with, blessed by the awesomeness of things just as they are. <laughs>